Om Shri Sai Ram. I offer my most humble pranams at the lotus feet of beloved Bhagwan. It is indeed a great privilege to be a devotee of the Lord when He comes down in human form as an avatar. But possibly a greater privilege along with being devotee is to be a person on whom Swami or the avatar gives responsibilities. That is an office bearer. Whether it is a coordinator for a small samiti or the chairperson of the Sri Satya Sai International Organization worldwide, the size of the position or the size of the responsibility does not matter. The fact that a responsibility has given shows something very special. It shows that the person concerned has won the faith and trust of Swami. During the many years which I spent in the physical proximity of Bhagwan, I have seen that Swami always gave a physical special access, special seating, special everything for those who were members of the organization, for those who were office bearers. In fact, Contrary to the wrong notion that some people have that the rich people, the powerful people, the influential people were given prominent places in the veranda in Swami's presence. It was the office bearers who had taken up responsibilities who were given prominent seating. Whether it's the veranda, whether it's the hall, whether it is anywhere. Not just that. Whenever there was any issue or problem or an emergency or an urgent message that an office bearer or a person doing responsibilities, carrying out duties for the organization had, they were given the special privilege of approaching Swami and handing a letter. Why? Why did Swami do all this? Because there is something special. Because being a member and more importantly being an office bearer, involves sacrifice. Sacrifice of time, sacrifice of energy, sacrifice of resources. Of course, when we are being a genuine devotee and a genuine office bearer, we don't feel like it's a sacrifice. I'm reminded of the experience of Bhaduri Mahashay. This is recorded in the autobiography of a yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda Ji. Bhaduri Mahashay had great family wealth. He gave it all up to become a sannyasi. So people who came to him would often tell him, Oh master, you are great. You gave up great family wealth. You sacrificed so much for God. He would say, you are reversing the case. I gave up a few paltry rupees and a few trinkets in order to win a cosmic empire of eternal bliss. But the world is giving up that cosmic empire of eternal bliss for paltry positions, for mere trinkets. The world is the great renunciant. They are the tyagis and I salute them. So you see, when we know what the avatar is, when we know who Swami is, it is not a sacrifice we are doing. It's an investment. It's an investment. We will be able to make all choices in life keeping that in mind. Just before the great Mahabharata war took place, you know, both the Pandavas and the Kauravas, both of them wanted Krishna on their side, you know, because Krishna is such a powerful ally. And therefore, Duryodhana, who is like the head of the Kaurava forces, is sent to seek Krishna's assistance. Same way Arjuna from the Pandava side, he is also coming to seek assistance from Krishna. Now Krishna is sleeping in his bedroom. Both of them are guests so they are given entry there. Arjuna is the person who comes second. Duryodhana comes first. But Duryodhana goes and sits near the head of Krishna. And Arjuna in all humility sits at the feet of Krishna. When Krishna wakes up, his eyes first fall on Arjuna. So he asks Arjuna, what do you want? And Duryodhana says, oh I was here first. Ask me what I want. But Krishna says, no, my eyes fell on Arjuna first. So I'll ask him what he wants, what he came for. 
and arjuna says lord you know that a war is imminent i have come to seek your assistance and duryodhana says no i also come for the same i i came first so i need to get it i need duryodhana he is fighting <laughs> See, there are two things that I can offer and you choose, Arjuna, you choose because you came first, you will get the first choice. On one side is my entire army, my entire kingdom, all my wealth, everything, everything that I have built. That is on one side. And on the other side, it is me. Whom do you want to choose? But remember, I will not be even fighting. You know, If you choose me, I will not even fight the war. I promise I won't be taking up weapons at all. Without flinching, you know, Duryodhana says, this is unfair, Lord, I should, not Lord, he doesn't say Lord, this is unfair, Krishna, I should get first choice. And Krishna is firm, he says, no, Arjuna will get first choice. Now, Duryodhana feels all is lost. But then Arjuna says, without flinching, he says, Krishna, I want you. Duryodhana is so happy. Wow. So he says, okay, Krishna, fine, if Arjuna doesn't want, I'll take, I'll take your army, no problem. But inside he is very happy. He thinks, what an... Idiot Arjuna is. What a fool Arjuna is. He is taking Krishna. That to Krishna has promised he won't fight. What is the use of Krishna? <laughs> I'll take the entire Narayani Sena, the entire army, all the wealth, all the resources, all the Yadavas, everyone on my side. Yeah, he's so happy. In retrospect, we know who is the one who made a wise choice. Arjuna. Arjuna knew that he is not sacrificing anything because he is asking for the greatest. He is asking for Krishna himself. <laughs> when Krishna is there, I don't need anything else. I don't care. The entire whatever you may take, officially whatever belonged to Krishna was taken by Duryodhana. But everybody got destroyed. The entire Yadavas as well. The Yadavas were Krishna's own family. <laughs> you know? There's one beautiful point that was highlighted by a saint. He says, See, the Yadavas always said Krishna belongs to us. Krishna is ours. You know, they were trying to copyright Krishna. But the Gopikas, on the other hand, they would say, we belong to Krishna. There's a lot of difference in these two statements. When you say we belong to Krishna, Krishna is the larger one and we are a part of Krishna. And when you say Krishna belongs to us, when you try to copyright Krishna, like the Yadavas did, it's like we are great and Krishna is part of us. And that's why the Gopikas are exalted and worshipped and adored as embodiments and epitomies of devotion even today. Whereas the Yadavas, they destroyed themselves by infighting. So, we should always know that we belong to Swami and Swami alone and whatever happens, we choose Swami. Why am I telling this story is because in his discourse on the 21st of November 1968, Swami says, what is the most important criterion to be an office bearer? See, as I said, we all would love to be an office bearer because it carries special privileges. Swami would off, always give these privileges, you know, and let us not forget that Swami is omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. What is it? Now we don't have those privileges. No, no, no. The privileges that Swami wishes to give, nobody can take away. I remember in 2007 or 8, one of the students with whom Swami used to speak, uh, he found it very difficult to talk to Swami because Swami now was coming for darshan in a car and Swami was so far away, not available at all. So on one occasion when he got the chance, he got up and said, Swami, before you were so available for us, now you are not available. Swami said, Availability was never there with the devotees. It is always I who chose to make myself available. And even now, to those whom I wish to give my availability, I am available. So let us not be fooled into thinking we came late to Swami. If we had come earlier, we would have got more. No, 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 no. We can't get this much more or this much less than what Swami has decided to give us. Because Swami decides to give us based on what is good for our spiritual evolution. Nobody can take it away. Even if I'm in moon, if I'm in the Mars, if I'm in Jupiter also, I will get what Swami is going to give me. Nobody can take that away. And let us not be fooled in thinking that anybody can take anything away. Because our faith is that Swami is the ultimate. Swami is the superpower. We don't need anything. We just want Swami. And Swami said, what is the most important facet to be an office bearer? 
because we're going to get those privileges right apart more than the devotee privileges to get that we need to be an office bearer and what is the qualification according to swami not according to anything else swami said the office bearer whether it's a state president district president the center head or regional president or spiritual coordinator devotional coordinator whatever we have is that they must have complete faith in god and then in that same discourse swami goes on to tell you know the discourse on 21st november 1968 please do refer to it swami goes on to tell not just faith in any god faith in this name and this form in the name of satya sai baba in the form of satya sai baba that is the qualification that is needed because one may question what is there i can worship any name and any form right yes as a devotee okay not as an office bearer i'm reminded of how uh, professor v vinayak krishna gokak vk gokak the first vice chancellor of swami's university he was offered the presidentship or the uh, you know the top position in sai samaj sai samaj is an organization of shirdi sai baba and he felt it is fine he will accept it because you know after all swami is part two right swami has said he is shirdi shirdi ke avatara huh? so yes i will take it but when swami got to know this swami said resign from all the positions that you have as vice chancellor as everything in the sat sai organization he said swami but shirdi sai no that name and that form is different the principle of divinity is same in all but as an office bearer you have to have loyalty to that name and form so that is very very important when we enjoy the privileges of an office bearer dear brothers and sisters let me assure you even now when swami is physically not present i am telling this out of my personal experience the prayers the words the thoughts of an office bearer who has decided to sacrifice some things in life to serve swami they reach swami faster and swami responds faster definitely in the worldly sense because there is a sacrifice and that sacrifice will confer blessing swami would say nakarmana na prajaya dhane na tyage na ike amrutatva manushu meaning not by your wealth not by your position not by your status not by your copywriting do you achieve god you achieve god by making sacrifice when you make sacrifice god is yours Yes, when Draupadi called out to save her honor, Krishna thought, "What has Draupadi done for me?" She had torn a small bit of sari and tied his finger when it was bleeding. And Krishna said, "No, she gave me sari. I will give her sari." She gave one inch, and Krishna gave her a Guinness Book of World Records. So many two kilometers of sari. God gives like that, but every small sacrifice counts, and therefore it is so important for us. the first qualification without it whether we hold to the position or not we are disqualified in swami's eyes we should have implicit and complete faith in the name and form of bhagwan shri satya sai baba and swami says it's not enough if you just think you have faith or say you have faith that faith must exude in every thought in every word and every deed in short we have to become reflections of bhagwan shri satya sai baba people must feel his presence in our presence by our behavior when rama returned from the forest bharata was exuberant at chitrakuta itself he received rama in the chariot and brought rama to the kingdom and swami says that when they came people could not make out who is bharata who is rama whom do they go and adore because two ramas are being seen in the chariot and swami said that thinking of rama incessantly bharata had become like rama people could not make out the difference and noticing this bharata started taking and putting flowers on rama and bowing down to rama to indicate to everybody else that this is rama that is what happens yad bhavam tad bhavati as our thoughts are filled with swami as our words are filled with swami as our deeds are filled with swami swami will start manifesting through each and every one of us that is what swami says in the letter he wrote to charles pen saying that my darshan will exude from each and every one of you while i say all this there might be doubts that come in as to but now swami is physically not there right arjuna chose krishna physically we also can choose swami that way but now swami is not there what do we do in 
about 18 of us traveled to the Himalayas to do the Chardham Yatra, Gangotri, Yamunotri, Badrinath, Kedarnath. Kedarnath is the magnificent temple of Lord Shiva. Behind this Kedarnath temple, everybody said that there is one Kedar Baba, Kedar Baba, you know, uh, uh, supposed to be a saint and everyone said you should meet him. Personally, I was not very keen to meet any other saint, sage or anybody because I felt Swami is there. This is 2013 when Swami was physically not there, but so what? Physically being there is just one aspect of Bhagwan. Swami is there. Even now, dear brothers and sisters, let us conduct ourselves in every event, every occasion, everything that we do because He is there. He is not just a photograph. Don't treat God like a photograph. Treat the photograph like God and we will experience His presence every moment. 100% without fail, we will experience that in our hearts, in our beings, in our minds. Anyway, we went to meet this Kedar Baba and uh, we chanted some Vedas there. I felt very happy because, you know, I felt like we are chanting in front of Swami. There was a big Yagna flame there and that orange flame reminded me so much of my Swami and I felt I'm sitting in Swami's presence and chanting Vedam. I was in bliss. After that Veda chanting, that Kedar Baba was just silent. We were also silently sitting. One devotee from the group asked this Kedar Baba, you know, Baba, now our Swami is not there. What advice, what message do you give us? How should we, what should we follow? What should we do? This devotee asked this question. That Kedar Baba's eyes became big and he flared up and he said, Murk, meaning fool. Kya Roop Avatar Hota Hai? Kya Sirf Roop Avatar Hota Hai? He asked, is only the form of the Avatar the Avatar? Avatar ke Shabd Avatar Hote Hai, he said. Meaning, the words of the Avatar is the Avatar. It's not just the form of the Avatar that is the Avatar, the words. And he said, don't those words remain with you even today? Dear brothers and sisters, unlike the other avatars, we have Swami's words with us. Satya Sai speaks. His discourses are available. His stories, his vahinis, everything is available for us. That is the compassion, the love, the mercy that our Swami has had on us. It's all available. I still remember, yes, that is, let us not be foolish to think that our Swami is gone. His Swami is not gone. His words are there. What is the Bhagavad Gita? The Bhagavad Gita are the words of the Lord. What is Sai Gita? We think Sai Gita is the elephant. But Sai Gita is the song celestial of Sai. The words of Sai. And out in his immense compassion, he is allowed to keep, a, keep those words as word documents, PDF documents, audio files, video files. Wow, it's all available for us. Just visit satisai.org. Go to the discourses. Every discourse of Swami has been so beautifully classified. Satyasai.org and you go to that discourse. Everything is there. These discourses, whichever discourse has audio, those audios are also linked there. So beautifully classified. I delight in going through the discourses because these discourses have the answers to every problem, every question, everything Swami answers, every decision Swami helps to make. The only decision we have to make is to be with Swami. We have to choose Swami just like Arjuna chose Krishna. Well, again, some might ask, uh, no, 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 every question is not there. What about this question? What about that question? You know, people ask, what about this question, this question? I didn't find an answer in Satya Sai Speaks. The Lord sometimes will not give the answers directly because because the problems are so personalized, we will require personalized answers. But let me assure you this much. When we immerse ourselves in thought, word and deed of Swami, we are so much filled with Swami that we will get our personalized answers in unique ways, thrilling ways. We will be very clear and we will know what is the answer. But for that, we have to put in the effort. Let us do our own soul searching and think, how much time do we spend in Sai literature every day? Do I spend at least 15 minutes a day reading Swami's words, 
listening to his golden words which are all available at the tap of a finger at the click of a mouse it's never in the history of humanity has the words of the avatar been made available so easily do we listen yet we call out to him when we are in trouble and we say swami why are you not answering me the answer is there swami says if you do not understand my silence how will you understand my words we need to become silent and silence is not just physical silence though it begins with physical silence it is the calming of all the other thoughts it is difficult to become thoughtless and therefore let us spend all our time and energy on one thought on swami and read whenever we get time because these are what will save us in our life let me share one personal incident to show how you know sometimes uh, we get confused answer is coming from within but is it swami answering me or is it my mind how do i differentiate between the angel and the devil <laughs> the conscience and the mind correct we get this doubt when we look at cartoons tom and jerry cartoons walt disney cartoons or even some other movies and children's things they show the angel coming with wings with a halo and all that and the devil coming red in color with horns a tail you know and the angel will tell oh my child don't do like this and the devil will tell hey you do this okay but in reality it doesn't come like that <laughs> because if it comes like that we know which is the good voice which is the wrong voice in reality both voices seem same how do i make out difference between what my conscience between what swami within me is saying and what is my mind saying as i said the prerequisite is first we have to saturate ourselves with swami because yad bhavam tad bhavati what we think what we feel that is what we become first we do that that sadhana let us inculcate it is preparation for those tough times when we have to take a decision and make a call very 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 important otherwise we will get swayed by what people are telling what the crows are crying what the dogs are barking <laughs> no we don't get our answers from crows crying and dogs barking we get it in the silence the inner silence when i was in 12th grade i was studying for biology exam and i saw some of my classmates playing i got tempted to go and play with them they were spraying water on each other and it, it looked very uh, fun so i went and indulged in that but then i realized that oh i need to study for my biology exam which was there the next day so i came back and started studying but then again i got tempted to go and play and as i'm playing again i felt like no no i need to study this went on for a couple of times and i realized that i'm neither am i enjoying the play <laughs> nor am i studying but my priority was to study in order to ensure that i am focused on my studies i said swami till i finish reading two chapters i will not have my lunch you know because in the hostel it's quite strict the timings there's a lot of discipline that's followed in the hostel so i said this is what i'll do now again i got tempted and started playing and soon i could hear the lunch bell going and i had not read two chapters now those two voices started coming one voice said see arvind go have your lunch and study no big deal now the other voice said no you should finish studying the two chapters finish reading the two chapters then only you should eat then the voice said see arvind what swami says swami doesn't like his students or devotees fasting how many times swami has discouraged them from fasting so don't do fasting to please swami the other voice came back and said no 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 you should finish reading two chapters then only you should eat then again the first voice is saying no but arvin see if you don't eat you will feel tired you will feel hungry and your focus will all be on the hunger how can you focus on your studies then so better you go and eat and then you can read but again that voice is that other voice is very boring voice is sticking to the same thing saying no no arvin i think you should study two chapters and then only you should uh, go for food ah uh, by the time you read two chapters Uh, lunch time will be over you go to the can uh, you go to the dining hall they will tell you you are too early for dinner <laughs> so it won't work what is the response of the other voice no you should start, read these two chapters and then only go for food come on man be creative now tell me which is the voice of the mind which is the voice of the conscience 
I was thinking, what is, what is it? <laughs> then, you know, this first voice, as I said, gave a very interesting solution. It said, see, Arvind, you promised Swami that you will read two chapters. You didn't say you will study two chapters, right? So quickly read it. Simply read it. Finish. Ah, yeah, read it quickly. Go have food. After that, you can spend time studying. I said, oh, this is nice, nice solution. And that's exactly what I did. I went quickly read it off. In 15 minutes, I was done. Went, had lunch. After that lunch, I sat back to study. And I felt, yeah, I listened correctly. I have done the right thing. I have uh, ensured that I don't displease Swami by fasting. I have also ensured that I kept my promise. Everything covered. Very nice. Very intelligent. That evening as we sat for darshan, when Swami was passing by me, I got up to give a letter and Swami said, mental hospital. <laughs> he said, mental hospital. I felt happy. Because it doesn't matter what Swami tells, you know, as long as Swami speaks, I'm happy. So I was very happy. Then he turned to the person who was sitting opposite to me, an elderly person, and he told him, take him to mental hospital and admit him there. <laughs> now I got a little scared. I was wondering what if that person takes it seriously. <laughs> anyway, then Swami walked a little ahead, suddenly stopped, turned around, and again told that other person, that elderly person, he told him, when you admit him in mental hospital, don't give him food to eat. My God. Don't give him food to eat. Which means, Swami knows every thought I was thinking. And Swami felt that I didn't deserve food that day. Which means, Swami's voice was that second voice, the boring voice that kept telling, read two chapters, then go for food. Based on this experience, dear brothers and sisters, I felt that there are some tips by which we can easily make out some rule of the thumb, as they say, rules of the thumb, by which we can make out which is Swami's voice and which is the mind's voice. The mind's voice will give selfish solutions, solutions that will ensure that our body is taken care of because the mind feels that we are the body. The conscience knows that we are the Atma, right? So the conscience choice, the conscience solution is never selfish. Because the conscience is God and God knows we are not the body and the mind. The body and the mind, the mind will suggest answers which are good for the body and the mind. So therefore, they will be selfish. They will be uh, things that will give us immediate gain. It will immediately fulfill our desire. It will immediately give us power or give us influence or give us money or something like that. Personal gain first. Voice of the conscience is selfless. You can even note down these points. Thumb rules of the thumb. The second thing is, the mind, the voice of the mind will give multiple options. See this, see that, logical, see, Swami doesn't like fasting, so don't fast. See, you'll be weak if you don't eat food. You eat well, you can study better. See, why don't you, you know, and he'll give cunning answers of the mind is very cunning, right? The cunning devil it is. He'll tell, oh, why don't you eat? You Anyway, said you'll only read. You didn't tell you'll study. All these, you know, like this kind of lawyering it'll do. But the conscience will keep sticking to the same thing. No, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. It will be boring, monotonous, but it will be giving the same firm solution. No options, no choices. That is how the voice of the conscience is. Finally, when we choose to listen to the mind, even if the whole world comes and tells you did the right thing, very nice, good, we will not be at peace with him. The peace is the final solution which shows us what we have done is right or wrong. But if we follow the voice of Swami, the voice of the conscience, let the whole world say what you did was wrong. You are going away from God. You are doing adharma. Let them tell. You will have so much contentment and peace. And I say this with complete personal experience. Whatever it is. That is what I learnt in 12th grade as the difference between the voice of the conscience and the mind. It's not easy to follow the voice of God. It's not easy to choose Swami. Because look at that, Arjuna, imagine at that point, now in retrospect, we can say, ah, Arjuna, great, we'll also do what Arjuna did. But look at that, huh? Pandavas are only five, Kauravas are hundred. The Kauravas have more friends. They are having the official kingdom. The Kauravas say, we are the official rulers. Hastinapura belongs to us. Duryodhana says, I am in Hastinapura. This is the capital. I am the ruler. These, we are this. And they have the maximum number of allies. All are our allies. You are nothing. In such situation, it is so important to get more power and resources on your side. At that time, Krishna is telling, you want my power and resources? I won't come. 
But if you want me, I will come without any of the things. The Narayani Sena is one of the most powerful armies. No wonder Duryodhana wanted it. He was very greedy. Swami says that is the fault about Duryodhana. Very greedy. But the true greed is in Arjuna because he says, I want Krishna. That's all. Nothing else I want. Krishna, even if you don't fight, no problem. You be with us. That's all. His faith was such that even if they didn't win the war, see, they won the war because ultimately truth triumphs. Dharma wins. Dharma rakshati rakshita. Wherever the Lord is, victory is there. But 14 years, it didn't seem like the Pandavas would win. They were always losing only. They won the ultimate battle. But they wanted Krishna. That's all. Krishna, even if we lose, no problem. You be on our side. That is the reason why when they won, the won the whole kingdom, the whole empire, they were not interested in the empire. Because having won that, they were ruling it well. The moment Krishna leaves, they also don't want to stay anymore. Because we want Krishna alone. The kingdom for which they fought and killed millions of lives, it was a bloody war. They just gave it up in a trice and walked away. Because we want Krishna. If Krishna is in the kingdom, we want the kingdom because Krishna is there. If Krishna is not there, we don't want anything. Swami would say, without Krishna, Hastinapura is Astinapura. Hastinapura is the name of Hastinapura. Asti means what is remains, uh, remains after burning in a funeral. That is what it becomes. Astinapura. Without the Lord. So, we should choose Krishna and it will be difficult. We should choose Swami. And complete faith in the name and the form. That is the qualification Swami seeks uh, from an office bearer. I will conclude with one beautiful story that I came to know of recently of a very uh, dedicated member of the Sri Satisai International Organization, Brother Sanjeevan from Sri Lanka. You know, he, he got to know Swami as a youngster and he fell in love with bhajans. He became a devotee. I won't go into that story. I want to come to that point to show that it is not always easy. Even with Krishna on your side, even with Swami on your side, things, it doesn't mean it will go rosy. But that is the right thing to do to stick on to Swami. He felt inspired to join the media field. Everybody in his family said, Sri Lanka media means covering wedding and doing wedding photography. It's useless. No career. Don't. Listening to them, when he was thinking, should he change his career? He prayed to Swami. Swami came in his dream and said, you have selected a beautiful field of work. Continue along with it. So, despite everybody telling that he is a fool, he continued. He continued in this field. And in fact, Swami in his dream also told him, you will go to Australia for studying for two years. So, continue. Based on that dream, he kept applying for a visa. But those were times when Sri Lanka was troubled by so much of crisis going on there, war. And therefore, he was viewed as a refugee, not as a student. And his visa never came. So he kept wondering, Swami, what is this Swami? Never, never. You only said, but I'm not getting my visa. But it was during that period that he got multiple opportunities to visit Swami in Puttaparthi and Swami gave him beautiful physical darshans, opportunities, many, many things. I won't go into those details because possibly that story we can reserve for some other time. Cutting the long story short, after Swami left physically, just an year before that, sorry, I'm sorry, it was not after Swami left, it was in uh, before Swami left only, in 2010, he got married and his wife got a visa to go to Australia. And therefore, it was called a skill migration visa where she was taken in as a skilled person. And he traveled because he is the spouse. Having reached Australia, he now remembered that Swami had said apply, right? So he applied and he found that the fees, everything was so less compared to what it was originally because now he was a resident. He was not somebody from outside the country. And then he realized the wisdom in Swami delaying. God's delays are never his denials. And the most beautiful thing is when he approached, you know the project, he had only one project in his portfolio to show. And that was the project about a Satsai International Organization cancer hospice. He had made one documentary. Seeing that the dean was so impressed, 
Everybody had 15, 20 projects in their portfolio. He had only one and that is Swami's. That was enough. If we have Swami, it's enough. He got through where people with other 15, 16 portfolios couldn't get through. The Dean was so impressed. He said, you can finish a two year course in one year. I will ensure that you can do if you work real hard. And he wanted to start earning quickly. So he was ready. Two years course done in one year. Very happily settled. Everything wonderful. He was about to buy a house in Australia. When Swami comes in his dream and tells, leave everything and come back to Sri Lanka. You know, he first thought maybe it is metaphorical, it is symbolic because very difficult, right? Just now you have settled. Your children have started going to school in Australia. Go back to Sri Lanka. What? So he just continued with life thinking that it's okay. Six months later, Swami comes again in his dream. Not six months later. Sometime later, Swami again comes in his dream and tells him, you better return. Very stern, very strict. You better return to Sri Lanka. And that's it. He told his wife. His wife was also convinced. In a matter of two months, they wound up everything in Australia. Just resigned from the jobs, returned to Sri Lanka. Everybody said, you are a bloody fool. You are being stupid. What is this? And for months, they're not getting job. They've taken up a rented house. The children have to join school. They have to pay fees. They have to pay so many things. Savings are gone. Nothing else left. Oh God, what happened? It, it drove Sanjeevan to a real frustrated situation. He said, Swami, what is this Swami? I'm listening to you and what is this happening? He got so upset that he took one photograph of Swami and began to scold Swami through that photograph and said, Swami, what is this? Dear brothers and sisters, intense emotion towards Swami, whether it is anger, whether it's upset, whether it is love, everything is fine as long as it's directed to Swami. You know how Swami responded magically? Again, it's a long story, but cutting it short, he became the first ever employee for the Sri Satsai International Organization. He continues to do that for almost now it's six years. He's, the, he's working as a video editor. He's working, he's doing a lot of work. And the amazing thing is he says, I'm so happy now, brother. I'm in the media field and I'm working on the favorite media of mine, which is Swami. I'm so happy. My family is taken care of. I'm so blissful. I just don't know how to thank Swami for. Just imagine he is grateful to Swami for all the difficulties of his life because that has led to such a beautiful fulfillment. What I'm trying to say here is once we choose to follow Swami, the path might not be easy. But that is the only path to take for our salvation. And the best thing is knowing that Swami is always beside me, in me, above me, below me, walking along with me in the path. That is invaluable. Just like the Pandavas discovered, we will also discover that it doesn't matter if the whole world is against us. We have Swami with us. For the privileges that we get as an office bearer, we need to pay in terms of our faith complete faith and surrender to Swami. When we do that, just like Bharata, people felt is Rama, people will also feel Swami in our presence. That is what we have to do. There was once Brother Deepak Anand, when he was giving a talk in Swami's presence, after the talk, Swami asked him, Swami asked him, how was your talk? He said, Swami, you have to tell. Because Swami, if you are happy, then the talk is good. If you're not happy, talk is not good. Swami said, how do you know if I'm happy or not? He said, that's why I'm asking you, Swami, tell me if you're happy. Swami said, now it's okay. But if I'm physically not there, how will you know that Swami is happy or not? Brother Deepakanan didn't have an answer. And then Swami told him, after you speak, even if one person comes and tells you, that when you spoke, I felt Swami. You can be sure that Swami is happy with you. Dear brothers and sisters, we can extend this to every act that we do, whether it is bhajans, whether it is seva, whether it is anything. During that, if somebody comes and tells us that they felt Swami, we can be sure that we are doing it in sync with Swami. Grateful to Swami for this opportunity. And I think all of us should be grateful to Swami for this beautiful responsibility and opportunity that he has given us to be office bearers in his organization. Let us pray that our faith in him keeps growing stronger every passing moment. Faith in his name, Shri Satya Sai Baba. Faith 
in this beautiful form. Thank you. Jai Sai Ram.